chapter one, section one. And in this section, we're going to be talking about what is science. And this is going to lay the foundation for this course as we study the nature of life on Earth. If we take a look at this organism that we have here, this is the Amazon horn frog. And uh, we could ask many different questions about this uh, particular frog. We could ask what's the function of these horns above its eyes or what's the function of the coloration pattern on its skin or how does it eat, how does it breathe. Uh, if we saw the population decline in the region, uh, why is that population declining? We could ask all these questions and we'd rather not guess and so uh, instead we want a process in which we can know things and so the process that we come to know uh, things or understand the natural world in biology is this process called science and so remember you need to be taking notes and you'll be turning those in next class uh, meeting. <coughs> so what is <coughs> what science is and is not? So this picture or drawing uh, shows what's called bloodletting and this was an ancient practice uh, to cure disease and so uh, you would uh, rid yourself of a lot of your blood in hopes to rid yourself of disease and so the guess that they had was that disease was caused by an imbalance of blood fluids and so that's why they would let some of the blood to hope to rebalance uh, the sick individual uh, obviously this didn't work well sort of uh, you would rid the person of disease but they would no longer be living oftentimes and so uh, it didn't really work. Uh, another guess was that evil spirits reside in the blood and so if you got rid of most of the blood you'd rid your body of evil spirits and therefore rid yourself of disease. But uh, we now don't use this practice because of science. Uh, we we are able to sift through information and do run experiments to really understand things. So we now know that disease is not caused by an imbalance of blood or evil spirits, but rather of other things, uh, which we'll discuss later in this course. So what is the goal of science? Well, it's to investigate and understand the natural world, uh, explain events in the natural world, and then use those explanations to make useful predictions. And so uh, really to investigate the universe. That's the goal of science. And so this could be uh, uh, space exploration or it could be uh, using submarines for exploration of the depths of the ocean or even just uh, science can be to improve uh, the health of humans. And so any of these are goals of science So science is an organized way of using evidence to learn about the natural world. Okay, so that's just the general definition you need to know. The word science can also refer to the body of knowledge that scientists have built um, over the, the course of several hundred years um, by using this process. And so science, that is what science is, using evidence to know the natural world. So that's important, using evidence to know the natural world. So over the course of this course, I'm going to uh, challenge you to think more like a scientist. And so the first step in terms of thinking of scientists is uh, to use observation. So that's where it all begins, is using observation, seeing something, hearing something, smelling something, uh, in order to uh, then come up with a question. So an observation is a process of gathering information about events or processes in a careful orderly way. So uh, oftentimes we use our senses in order to do this. And so over here we have Richard Feynman, this is my favorite scientist. And then you have scientists over here investigating uh, and measuring polar bear. But all, both these scientists, they start with an observation. That's very important. From there we're able to gather information like they were on the polar bear and uh, from these observations and, and we call this data and it can be two types of data it can be quantitative and that's where it's uh, numbers and so this can be through measuring or counting um, that's quantitative data whereas qualitative data is a description um, and this can uh, be that something looked very old or it um, the color uh, you know non-precise color of 
of something or the smell of something or something of that nature. That's qualitative data. And so scientists, uh, we use data to make inferences. So an inference is to make a logical interpretation um, of the data that you've seen and uh, we can base this off of prior knowledge or experience um, but that's what's in it, an inference. Is. So if we look at this picture here we have all this food here uh, most people eat chickens and so um, thousands of chickens. Well how do we know if the chickens are safe to eat? Well to sample each chicken to see if the meat is uh, not contaminated it would cost too much money, take too much time. So what we can do in science is we can take a random sample throughout this uh, barn and uh, you know sampling just some of the chickens from there we can um, get some data and then make an inference on whether that food is safe to eat or not based off of our sample um, that we've made. And so that's what science uses often. Uh, science we use, uh, after we've made an observation and asked some questions, we can propose a hypothesis. And a hypothesis, oftentimes uh, teachers or, or people will refer to this as an educated guess. And although that's acceptable, I just don't like the word guess. And so uh, what a hypothesis is, is a proposed scientific explanation for a set of uh, observations. And so uh, it's a little bit more than just a guess or an educated guess, you're using um, the observations that you've seen, you're using prior information, and you're going to propose a, uh, an explanation for what you've seen, and that's hypothesis. We use this off often in science, and, and uh, for example, right here, what we have here is um, a new hypothesis of the formation of our moon, and the hypothesis is... Uh, that we had two moons and they collided to make one. And so that's a hypothesis and then uh, to be set forth to the scientific community. The scientific community will analyze uh, the data and, and then determine whether it can be confirmed or rejected. And so uh, hypothesis is pro proposed, but the um, in science, you must be able to test it. So hypothesis must be tested. And so uh, what we do in order to do this, and we'll go in more detail later, is we perform controlled experiments in order to gather new data. Uh, that's how we are going to test hypotheses. Oftentimes scientists uh, work in groups and uh, more and more we're seeing researchers uh, work in uh, big teams. In fact, a team like this is often small. Um, I've seen scientific papers uh, where there'd be a team of scientists of 60 to 70 scientists um, working on the same uh, work. And so working in teams is very important in science uh, to analyze, review, and critique all the data that, uh, the, the unbelievable amount of data that comes out of experiments. Uh, science is a way of knowing, and so science is an ongoing process, uh, and it involves these different steps that we've sort of briefly talked about, and we'll talk more about, but making observation, asking a question based off of that observation, designing a, an experiment to test a hypothesis, form a hypothesis, and uh, then make inference off your data that you've collected. Uh, we'll get into the details of the process and the exact steps, but here's some basic uh, understanding of the steps that are involved in science. Uh, and scientific understanding is always changing, and so and that's a good thing. So, so as we gain more information or new data, uh, our understanding changes, and so uh, and that helps us form new hypotheses. Hypotheses and and uh, furthers our understanding. So scientific understanding is always changing. A good scientist is going to be a skeptic, one who questions both the existing uh, ideas and then also new hypotheses that come up. And so a good scientist